Did you know that some ocean currents are small, like rips and tidal currents? Other ocean currents are vast and take centuries to move water around the entirety of our planet. Surface currents move approximately 10% of the water in the oceans and they're driven by winds, tides and the Coriolis effect from Earth's rotation. As wind blows across the ocean surface, it drags water with it and that water is then replaced from the water below. The shape of the coast and of the sea floor also affects the way currents move across our planet. For example, here in Singapore, ocean currents move through the Singapore Straits from the seas around us. Elsewhere, the Coriolis effect helps to move currents away from the equator towards the poles, one of the primary drivers of our surface currents. Deep ocean currents are driven by a process we call thermohaline circulation. That's driven by the Coriolis effect, moving warm water away from the equator towards the poles. And as that happens, that water cools, becomes more saline and more dense. And as it moves to the poles, it sinks and is replaced by other water from the surface. And that drives what we call deep water circulation. And the water at the bottom of the ocean then moves through the deep ocean emerging again in other areas of the surface. The process of thermohaline circulation connects the surface currents to the deep ocean currents and they move water masses across the whole planet and they do it incredibly slowly and it can take centuries for a water mass to make a whole circuit of the global conveyor belt. As our oceans warm, we're likely to see changes in our ocean currents, marine ecosystems and winds. We might see increases in tropical cyclone intensity or frequency and changes in other climate systems like the El Nino Southern Oscillation, which may change in frequency and intensity.